Now I'd like to introduce the tutorial data that we're going to be working with in this workshop. We're going to work with a Parkinson's mouse tutorial, which is a fairly comprehensive workflow tutorial that walks you through some steps you might take in a standard microbiome analysis, or at least a good place to start with your analysis so you can see what's going on and then decide how to move forward. You may have heard of Parkinson's disease in the context of someone like Muhammad Ali and Michael J. Fox. In fact, Parkinson's disease is the second most common neurodegenerative disorder, and it affects about 1% of adults over the age of 60. Parkinson's, as a neurodegenerative disorder, affects a region of the brain called the substantia nigra. It affects about 1 million Americans, with most, with most diagnosed after the age of 50. And Parkinson's disease is associated with motor symptoms. You probably think of tremors and slow movements, but it's also associated with non-motor symptoms like constipation. One of the reasons that people started to think that the microbiome might be associated with Parkinson's disease was because of the constipation. In 2014, the first article looking at the relationship between Parkinson's disease and the microbiome was published. Two additional articles followed shortly thereafter, and it was relatively strong evidence for the relationship between the microbiome and Parkinson's disease at some point in the progression. However, all three of these studies are case control studies, and so they compare healthy controls to people with Parkinson's disease. And while we can see an association, we can't understand the temporality. And so there are two ways that we might see a microbiome associated with Parkinson's disease in these patients. One is that you start out with healthy aging in a healthy microbiome, and then something about your microbiome changes and you develop Parkinson's disease. Or you might see healthy aging and a healthy microbiome, and then you develop Parkinson's disease and your microbiome changes in response to the disease. And so those, these are two possible ways that we could see a Parkinson's disease phenotype in an individual. However, it's challenging to test these two hypotheses in humans. We don't know when Parkinson's starts. There's a prodromal presymptomatic period that can last for many years. And so we don't know when people transition from healthy aging into that Parkinson's phenotype. Well, it's relatively common affecting 1% of the population. If you wanted to get a lot of people with Parkinson's disease in a prospective study, starting from when they're in their 40s and following them up into their 70s, you would have to collect a lot of people to be able to get a large enough sample size if you're assuming 1% of the population is going to be affected. It would take a long time to do this. You might need 30 years of follow-up to be able to make this determination. And so, it really isn't practical to do this experiment if you want to go further and understand the microbiome can affect whether or not someone develops Parkinson's disease. Luckily, there's a model system that helps us test for this. So there's this idea of notobiotic or germ-free mice. So you have mice that live in a bubble that have no bacteria, and you can introduce new bacteria to these mice and so you can see what the effect of introducing different kinds of bacteria are. You could introduce a single bacteria. You could introduce a community of bacteria. And so these act as a nice test system for being able to understand what's happening. There is also a mouse model of Parkinson's disease that gives you a susceptible model where it takes the gene that is overexpressed in Parkinson's disease or a gene that is associated with Parkinson's disease and it overexpresses the gene. And this leads to a Parkinson's-like phenotype that can then be used in studies. Using this mouse model and notobiotic mice, Samson et al. decided to look at what the relationship was between the gut microbiome and the development of Parkinson's-like symptoms in these susceptible animals. And so they did several experiments to get there. They started with just germ-free mice to look at what the effect of any bacteria was. Original experiment, they took six healthy donors, six with Parkinson's disease, and they transplanted them either into the healthy mice or the susceptible mice. 
and they had three cages with different types of mice, and then they followed them over time and looked at the change of the microbiome and the development of symptoms. And in the original experiment, they concluded that there was a relationship between the microbiome and the genotype, as well as a relationship between the mouse microbiome and the donor. And so in our tutorial, we're going to work with a subset of this data from two donors, one healthy, one with Parkinson's disease, and look at the six mice that every donor has over four time points. And we're going to try to see if we can find a difference in the microbiome associated with genotype.